everyone. A couple of people this week in lab asked me questions about being able to graph their data in Excel. And they asked if there was any pointers. And I realized there's a couple of things, and I may have explained something to a couple of people that was maybe slightly oversimplified, but I want to go ahead and go through here. So what I have here on the screen is uh, one of your fellow students sent me their data. Go ahead and plot that. Show you how to do about three of those so you can kind of see how I would go about doing this. The water titrations were not very many data points, so they're a little harder to do in some respects. Let's go ahead and go to what I did is I copied all the data, made the acetic, the acetic acid solution data, and then the acetate data in here. And I kind of, at that point, burnt out adding in, entering in data. So what I'll do here is I'll go to acetic acid data here. Now let's go ahead and do the acetate data first. It's the, the most, I'll just start with the base data here. Um, you know, the column in the, in the tables you had in the experiment was you recorded the amount of volume you added, and then you had to calculate the total volume you added. And doing that in Excel can be very easy. What I do here is do, take, put in the equal sign, just click there, and that's equals up, that zero comes here. And then I go ahead and put equal here, and then click on the cell above, hit shift, and then make the added plus, and hit that one. And that adds them together. And then from here down, I can just go ahead and drag that down. And I have the total volume. So it was about 360 microliters total added to this solution to get to the pH of, of about 12. And we'll go ahead over here and do the same thing again. Hit equals and then hit that cell. Hit enter and get a zero. Hit enter again. Click the cell above it, click plus, and that cell right there, and hit enter. And this way you can do this, and you can copy on down, and this way you get all the numbers all calculated for you, and you don't have to worry about them. You know, so you only have to enter in two columns of data. You don't have to enter in three columns of data. Um, you save, it's maybe a one-third savings, I guess. Um, but let's go ahead, and let's go ahead and do the graph. I don't know why, but I always start with base first. I'm not sure why, but I go ahead and highlight. So the total volume added, so this will be the x-axis, and here will be your y-axis, the pH. And we'll go ahead and highlight those. We'll go to insert, and then click this xy scatter. I think they sometimes, it's going to click that. And then in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this one where it connects the dots. Uh, frequently, when I'm doing standard curves and things like that, I will go ahead and hit just the points. But here for this, I'll go ahead and enter this one. And you see I have a curve here that comes out. It's kind of stable. There's a pH change, and it stabilizes again as it approaches 12. Now, I want to be able to add data to this chart. So I'll hit Select Data. And what I'll go ahead and do is click add and I'm going to change this to acid addition you'll see that'll be um, a, a, a legend for me then I'll go ahead and click this little up arrow here I will highlight just the numbers for the volume of acid added hit enter and then I'm going to hit the up arrow again and then highlight all the pHs over here and hit enter again Okay. Well, this one that has pH labeled here needs to be base addition, so I'll go ahead and click Edit and do type base addition. So we have here, let's go ahead and add a legend and start, let's go ahead and start making our chart look a little nicer. So we'll go ahead and go over to Add Element. And let's go ahead and add legend, and I'll have the legend off to the right. So we have base addition and acid addition. So you see the orange is acid, and blue is the base. Now let's go ahead and add the, the x-axis information. So add chart element, axis titles, primary horizontal, and it's volume of... 0.1 normal HCl or 
oh, oops, oh, 0.1 normal sodium hydroxide, NaOH. As you're adding either one, and, and then here we'll go ahead and on this axis here, we'll go ahead and add pH. So we'll go to axis titles, primary vertical, and just type P and H. There's pH, so you have a nice little graph, and you might want to add a chart title. It's not ne absolutely necessary. Uh, it does not substitute for uh, a, a figure legend, but we go ahead and put a uh, chart title on top, above chart, and we'll go saturation of you know, this is sodium acetate. You might want to capitalize and things like that. You may want to make it a little bit prettier for your, for your assignment. But here we now know what it is. And so I always like to go ahead, whenever I'm doing all my graphing and all this stuff, I, like to, I always put chart titles on. Sometimes I eliminate them before I copy them. But I like to have them there so because I'm generating, like this case, you guys will be generating four different plots, sort of like this. Um, let's go ahead and I'm going to go through the same thing once again. And this will be a, a case where there's a whole lot of points on one side and not very many points on the other side. That graph will look a little bit different than what I want you to see what it's going to look like. So what I do here is do the same thing is equal to this. This is total volume entered. It's equal to this plus that. Enter, and then you just grab that one and you just drag that down to the bottom here. Now you have total events for titration. Highlight those two areas. You just go to insert. X, Y, scatter this one here right here. I pick this one. You have a nice looking little titration curve here. Now go ahead and select data. In this case, I already know, and I've, since I've been doing base first, I could edit, and it's base addition. Okay. Now I'm going to add the acid data to it. Type acid addition, because that's going to be the, the series name. Um, hit this. Oh, I haven't done all the stuff. So I need to back, I need to stop here. Click X. Click cancel, in cancel, and go here. It's equal to, equal to this. This will be equal to this plus that. And here, in this case, typing 30 and 60 would have been really easy to do, but um, let's go ahead and show you how to do the, 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 the little math in Excel. And we'll go ahead and go back to the graph here. Go to chart design, select data. And now we'll go ahead and add. We'll add the series name of acid addition. Click there, click these numbers, and enter. Click this one here for the Y series. Highlight those three numbers and enter. And okay. Now here, uh, we'll go ahead and change this to base addition. So now we have a graph where, where the, acid, the acid titration went very rapidly because it was very, very close to the target pH of about 2, but the base took much longer to titrate. And let's go ahead and do the legends and things like that again. So make sure you have the graph highlighted with the little dots and the lines going around it. Do the axis titles. The primary horizontal is... Volume of uh, 
either 0 0.1 normal HCl or 0 0.1 normal NaOH. I misspelled either. Let me correct that. Add a space there. That looks good. Then we go ahead and add chart element, axis titles, primary vertical is P and H. There and then. Probably going to add a title, chart title here, above chart. Title is something like titration of acetic acid. We have that done. So it's basically it's a, it's it's keep doing the same things over and over again, and you go ahead and do it. Now the I found that sometimes doing just a few data points, some people have a little bit more trouble with. And let's go ahead and go to the water. So I'm doing three of the different titrations for you. So here, add is in, equal to that. Hit enter. Is equal to this plus that. Enter. And just drag it down. I mean, typing 30 and 60 would have worked. I mean, we can type 0 here and 30 here, and it works the same way. Let's go ahead and do the graph. So the total dispensed. Go ahead and go here, insert. We're going to go to XY scatter again. This one right here. And, you have, and there's only three data points, so it's not an exciting looking curve. But let's go ahead and select data. Let's go ahead and edit this one and do base edition. Now let's do add. Acid addition. Now I will tell you that it's pretty important to only highlight the numbers because if you highlighted the, all three of these things here, it's going to convert those numbers into text and you will not get a graph like you expect to see. So let's go ahead and just do this. Make sure you only highlight the numbers. This here and highlight these two numbers. Hit enter. So it's not particularly exciting looking, um, but here we go. We have the graph. You just go through all the same things again. Axis titles, horizontal. So we have that on the axis. On this axis here, we'll put pH. That'd be the primary vertical. pH. And here we'll go ahead and add a chart title. Of chart. of water, maybe make that a capital, whatever. Um, oh, and go ahead and file insert element, legend. I always think it's good to have a legend present so that we, know, particularly if you have more than, you only have one line on the graph, then a legend isn't necessary. But if you, as soon as you sort of have two lines on a graph, I think you really need to have a legend. And did I forget to put a legend in this one? Yeah, I did. So let's go ahead and go, it's again, it's just add element legend and I usually do it to the right. Um, I know some people like to add it to the bottom. Um, I seem to always like and it's the right. I'm not sure if there's any particular any particular reason but that's the way I've just generally done it in the past. And hopefully by me going through three sets of these for you, hopefully I didn't go too fast, but you know you can do a little bit of math and get the addition of all the the, the vol the total volume added pretty easily. And if you have any questions, feel free to get to send me an email. I'll be around this weekend, and I'll be answering email, and hopefully be grading 
your reports this weekend. I think they're due on Saturday. Uh, we'll see you later, and I hope this helped. We'll see you. Bye.